two things cello players are very subjective is the, is the rosin, the colophon we use, and the strings. Now for me, I didn't like the strings because I'm a Larson guy. A lot of people love Larson's and that's sure. super expensive. But uh, for anyone watching this, I changed all four strings for Larson mag Manga Cores, the Magna Cores, the, the top of the line little red one. I have them up there. And I found out, if you, anyone's watching this, don't use Manga Cores, at least for the G. I had to go regular. It was too... For, it was good for the A and the D, but and the and the C, but the G was just it was too much for this. Too bright. It was too bright for the G. So I went just to a regular Larson, regular medium tension. Also had strong tension. Strong tension. Don't I, I use that on the G? That was also a big mistake. So I went um, regular medium tension on all the strings, but these are three manga cores with a medium tension regular Larson with the high E. I didn't option for that because I want to go low, but I was able to find Larson high E, which is not supposed to exist by the way, but I have a Larson string for cello high E. So some of you guys... Do a six string. Well, that, that string is particularly uh, difficult, the, that high E string on a cello. Uh, it's very difficult to make a wound string for that pitch and tension that's required. The string is essentially twice as long as a violin, and it's tuned an octave lower than a violin. But if you were to play the octave note on your high E string on your cello, that's essentially like playing an E string on a violin. People want a, a wound string for the high uh, E on a cello because it does mellow it out a little bit, make it more like the rest of the instrument. But inherently, that string is going to be bright and violin-like. For a lot of cellists, you know, having a string that's so violin-like is kind of off-putting because it's got so much brilliance and everything. But if you want to have a six-string cello and you want to go up to E and you want to have a full cello scale length, that's the reality. That string, in any case, is going to get very bright. And some people, of course, love that. It's all in a whole, whole other dimension to their instrument. But if someone wants it to, to be always cello-like, that high E string is a challenge. The strings that it ships with, these are helicores, I believe. And you have a low F and a high E. They're not helicore, actually. They're very similar to helicore. Okay. Helicore was a string that was developed by Norman Pickering for the Dario company. Okay. And Norman Pickering, uh, you're probably too young to remember the Pickering cartridge in your phonograph. But when I was growing up, we all had Pickering cartridges, all invented by Norman Pickering, who also happened to be a very high-level violist and a serious engineer. But when I met him, he was working for the Dario String Company, developing the helicore strings. And so that's they come from him. And we they are tweaked slightly for our electric, but they are similar to a helicore, but not identical. You know, the, we're super utaku about strings, us cello players. And, um, you know, we're always looking for the best strings. Now, I personally, I would like to know, do all the NS, I mean, all the NS levels, the Wave, the NXTA, and the CR, do they all ship with the same string? No, I believe that the uh, Wave ships with uh, Prelude strings, which is a brand of the Dario, which is... Yeah, okay more of a student student brand. And strings are expensive and on that wave instrument it's all about cost effect, you know, getting to most um, value for okay. the dollar or whatever. And so it didn't make sense to put those expensive strings on there. Of course you can always put them on in addition to which the prelude strings sound pretty pretty damn good they're, too. They're, they're so it, it more affordable. 